Hey there. Welcome back to my channel. My name is Cynthia. Today I'm going to do a tarot spread for the new moon in Libra that we have coming up on the 2nd of October. I intend for my messages to be timeless, but you know, I want to do one for the new moon in Libra. We are in Libra season currently, and there is also an eclipse coming on that same day. It's a solar eclipse. I don't think we'll be able to see it from North America, maybe the East Coast. Go ahead and look that up and check if you'll be able to see it, if that's something you're interested in. And so that's what we're gonna do today for everybody. So we're gonna start with the Justice card because this represents Libra energy. The first question that I am going to ask is, where is the collective most fearful of conflict? Because Libra and Justice. So where is the collective fearful of conflict in their lives? Can you show me that? Ooh, ooh, ooh. How many we get? So we've got the Four of Swords and we have the Sun. These came out previously in reverse in another reading. I think the reading I did last week on just Libra season in general, not the new moon, but just Libra season. Yeah. Anyway, so four of wands, four of swords with the sun in regards to where are you most fearful of conflict? So the four of swords is about resting and it's air energy. So communication, intellectual pursuits, and the sun is Leo energy, fire energy, major arcana. So what I'm getting from that is if you're in need of rest, you're afraid if you take a rest, it's going to ruin your happiness. Okay. You're not going to be able to achieve your goals if you rest. And maybe you think that people will think you're lazy if you're resting because we're talking about how you need to avoid conflict. And maybe you have someone in your life that thinks if you sit down, they will make your life so unhappy. Okay and you will not feel comfortable with that. So you just continue just running and running and running and just sleeping with one eye open so that you can stay happy, so that you can shine on all your all of your plants here and they can just be looking up at you and demanding more and more and more because you're feeding them, right? You're helping them grow. But at some point you have to take a rest and that's been coming up a lot in my readings. So that's definitely one place that you could be fearful of conflict. You don't want people to perceive that you're a lazy person because you're resting. You don't want your happiness to be taken away and you think that you're getting your happiness from working yourself to the point of exhaustion. I think that's something that's pretty normal in our culture, especially if you're in the Western culture, but I just think it's permeated all of the entire world at this point. It's just constant work all the time. And if you sit down to rest, it, you're lazy, but you're not because it's productive. That's how you get inspiration by taking a break. It opens up channels for you. It is productive. At the bottom of the deck, we have the King of Cups. And so you wanna be in control of your emotions. You wanna be a balanced person in your emotions. And it's hard to do that when you don't rest. Your emotions can completely go off the rails, you know? So you gotta give yourself that time. Your happiness will still exist. Your creativity, the things that create happiness in your life will still exist. With fire, you've got passionate, creative energy that will all still exist if you take a break. In fact, it'll probably be even better if you do. So how does that fear of conflict affect the collective? I, I kind of already went into that, but let's see what the cards have to say about it. So how does that fear of conflict affect the collective? Oh, that's too many, way too many, way too many. Okay, it's like half the deck, hold on. It's like a mini shuffle, that's all. There we go, so. We love a good mini shuffle around here. All right, so how does the fear of conflict affect the collective? The Fool and the Knight of Wands. I'll just show you the cards real quick so you can see. The Fool is giving Alice in Wonderland. So afraid to take, um, to go on new adventures, not being able to take action. That's what the Knight of Wands does. Fire is action oriented. Sorry, I'm shaking the table. Um, it's action oriented energy. It's creative energy. Okay. It's impulsive when you've got the knight, but he's a bright. It's all right. Okay. It could be fun, 
But if you're afraid of it, you're not willing to take these risks to go down the rabbit hole to meet someone new. You know what they say about the Knight of Wands and I'll just leave it there. So it might be good to have a little bit of precaution here. If we're just talking about the energy and not a person, you're afraid to take risks. It keeps you, like even though you're also afraid of taking rest, okay, you're afraid of taking risks. And that's just not good. You're not really living your life. You're not thriving in that way. So what are you afraid of confronting? Because I, I want to know how you can get out of this energy. What are they, what is the collective afraid of confronting? What is it? Three of Cups. Other people? You're not, you don't think you have a good support system? You don't want to talk to these people. You don't want to tell them like, no, I actually need to rest right now. Like I cannot. You're, you're in people pleasing energy. If you've got the three of cups coming up and this is a celebratory card, it's about friendship, it's about bond, spirit family, soul family. You don't want to tell these folks that you need to rest or you don't want to try anything new. People pleasing energy doesn't mean anyone's pleased. It just means that you're making yourself smaller so that you can fit in with people and not rock the boat. Because you think that if you speak up about who you are as a person, you're completely authentic, right? If you say, you know what, I need a rest though. Or if you're vulnerable with people and say, you know what though, that scares me to do that. You think you're not gonna be received well by these people. First of all, if you know for sure that people are not gonna receive you well because you're vulnerable with them, they're not your people. They are not your people. You will be able to be vulnerable around the people that you are meant to be with. That's not an easy thing to say because I know that sometimes we have people in our lives that we cannot escape, okay? We live with family members, partners even, that somehow hinder us in a way, right? I've been there, I know, I know that feeling. You can still pursue the things that you feel comfortable with and sometimes even a little bit uncomfortable. If you have something in your heart that is speaking to you that you are interested in, right? And you're afraid that the person that you're around or the people you're around won't like it. You should still do it because it's in your heart and it opens up channels for you to become your truest authentic self. And once you pursue that goal and you move closer and closer to actually doing it and not caring, you become more whole. Because right now, as you make yourself small and you say, I can't, I can't talk to these people. I can't go on new adventures and I can't even rest. I don't even know what happiness looks like to you if that's if that's really what's going on here, okay? You're not you're not being who you are. And so you're not actually living your life, right? And Libra season is about balance, finding balance. And so the scales are tipped where you're just trying to make yourself as small as possible and not cause a stir. And I encourage you to just start taking small steps in the direction of an entire tsunami because that is what's going to set you free from this people pleasing type of energy you need to be able to shine your light through the sun shine your light okay um what's the worst that could happen if they shine their light if they decide to confront these people to just be honest with people to be vulnerable with people what is the worst thing that could happen i'm trying to amuse myself with the thoughts i'm having here the two of pentacles the worst that could happen you learn a new trick <laughs> that's the worst that could happen look at you that's balanced energy. You could feel like you're juggling. We are talking about the two of pentacles. Normally it's a guy that's juggling things, but he's doing it well. Okay. Just like this puppy is doing it well, very much balanced on the ball and has another ball. Okay. Is that the worst that could happen? You could just learn a new trick. That's really not that bad. Two of swords. You could definitely feel like you're at an empath, you know? Might have to make some choices. It makes sense because once you start rocking the boat, some people aren't going to be cool with it. And so you have to decide, am I going to let these people still be my people or am I going to let them go? The thing is that as much as some of these people might be holding you back from yourself, you're holding them back from themselves. Believe it. Because while you are saying, I'm going to dim my light to fit in, you're giving them a version of you that actually doesn't exist. You're faking it 
and you're creating an entire fake reality with someone. And so they are mirroring you back and giving you another fake reality. They're not even living their lives. And so the best choice is for you to do what is in your heart and to release anybody that doesn't agree with you in safe and healthy ways. Okay. So that everyone involved can get on the path that they're supposed to be on. Supposed to be. Whatever path is most aligned with their inner desires and makes them the most happy, if you will, right? It holds everybody back. What can guide the collective to overcome this? So how can you become more yourself? You can make choices, we were talking about that, but what else can guide the collective towards overcoming all of this? I'm about to find out. Get a different perspective. It's the hangman that flew out. You can wait a while, right? See how the eclipse energy hits you on the second. Then there's usually a one to two week shadow period, okay? Where you still get kind of eclipse energy. So there's stuff that's gonna be moving out of your life and it's time to set new intentions, if you will, because it's also the new moon. So try to see it from a different perspective. Try to put yourself in the shoes of someone else that's looking in on your situation, what they would think, right? Not in, from a place of judgment, right? Not from judgment, but from just an outside perspective. So this happened to me in therapy too. When I would tell my therapist what was going on in my relationship, she would say, what would your best friend say about that? I knew exactly what my best friend would say about that because I talked to my best friend every day, right? And she told me every day what she felt about that. Okay, I'm not saying that the people in your lives are always right about their perspectives, but when you meet people, like in the Oracle reading I posted last week, that can reflect to you from a source of stillness, and they give you a honest reflection, okay, it's not always peaceful. I mean, I have a lot of fire type of energy friends, so they just tell me their actual opinions all of the time. But what I'm saying is, is when you can actually be honest and vulnerable with the people in your life and you actually have this happy friendship and you're not scared of your friends and they're honest with you and they're not judgmental with you, you're able to get a different perspective about the things that are going on in your life. You shouldn't lean on it constantly. You should not trauma dump on your friends, right? But if you imagine inside of your head without asking, what would that friend say? What would this friend do? You know, still be yourself, but just kind of imagine it. And that can help you get a different perspective on what's going on. And that might help you overcome it, right? Or think about someone that you really admire and think about what they would do in that situation, right? Think about that. Cause I know you got someone that you really admire. And uh, if you admire them, it's probably because they're showing you something about yourself and what's hidden. And if you immediately go, you wouldn't put up with that ish at all then you know what you shouldn't be doing? Putting up with that ish. Okay, what's at the bottom of the deck? The Six of Pentacles. Six of Pentacles is about collaboration and charity, victory in a way. It's a happy thing. This is very Lady in the Tramp outside of this woman's kitchen. She's giving them a bone. So cute, I dig it. I'm trying to imagine it in the right way. I do this to myself all the time where I'm thinking about it. I'm like, like I can just go off the imagery of this card. It is charity. And sometimes that can be breadcrumby, but with this particular deck, that's not what it's giving, you know? She's giving them a whole bone. I mean, she's giving one of the dogs a bone. I think she's gonna go back and get another one for the other dog. And they're both gonna have their bones and they're gonna be very happy and they're gonna be cute together. So it's a good feeling, you know? So the overall energy, is wanting to be in a situation where you trust the people around you and you work together well and all of your needs are met and even some of the things you just want because dogs don't need bones they want them though if you have a dog you know you know that they want the bones and so you want to be in the situation where you get what you want and that's completely fair and the Page of Pentacles is the next card underneath that. And to me, that's giving that on the way is that, or at least that's what you want. And so in order to do that, you have to get a new perspective on what's going on in your life. Okay. And you need to adopt it. 
maybe I can somehow give you a new perspective. Hopefully I did. And that can help you move towards this. All these cards were upright. It was a very good type of energy, right? Like you want to be happy. You want to be collaborative. You want to win. You want to be able to have a balanced life and go on new adventures. But there's this underlying energy of being afraid of rocking the boat and being vulnerable. And what that is, is a fear of being your most authentic self. And if you're not who you are, what are you doing? What are we even here for? If you're not being who you are, like what, what is even the goal? What is the point, right? I encourage you to take care of yourself and be exactly who you are as loud as you want to be everywhere. Okay. I'm going to go ahead and get you a moonology card and close this one out. We'll see what uh, we got here. Okay. What guidance for the collective can we get with the moonology cards? I'm going to get one more. Yeah, that seems legit. I'll tell you what that is, but I'll tell you what it is in just a second, but it's legit AF as far as I'm concerned. Can I get one more for the collective, please? More guidance on that. Yeah, that one wants to come out. Okay. So the first one that I got was the full moon in Scorpio. It is time to release negativity. So if you have negative thoughts, negative self-talk that you're constantly doing, think about it. You've heard it before. Would you say that to your inner child? Would you say it's to your own child? If you don't have children, would you say it to your inner child? If no, what way can you change it? I'm not saying to get into toxic positivity, but if you're running around being a hater and being negative all the time, you are causing negativity and hate to be mirrored back at you at some point. You really are. I know it can be fun to be petty. Believe me, I enjoy it. But like, it comes back. It really does. And maybe you don't believe that. I'm not trying to fear monger. I mean, be a hater, it's free. But like, I find that when I try to see things from a positive perspective, positive things start coming into my life. Maybe not immediately, but you can reprogram your mindset so that you can see stuff from a more positive perspective and it helps you take action, enhance, enrich your life in ways that are productive. Okay, that's how I feel about that. The full moon, surrender to the divine. Okay, whatever the divine is for you, stay blessed. You know what I'm saying? Um, it's whatever, it could be your higher self, it can be the universe, it can be God. Whatever resonates with you, surrender to it. Some things are completely out of our control. We are in control of ourselves, our own actions. Okay, we've talked about this before on this channel. We are in control of our own actions. And sometimes that is about it, honestly, at the end of the day. Surrender everything else to whatever the divine is for you and everything will work out the way that it is meant to. And at the bottom of the deck is fixed moon, hold your vision. So whatever that vision is in your heart, hold on to it and keep taking steps in that direction. And that's what's gonna free you from putting yourself in a box and making yourself small because maybe you're making people feel more comfortable. Don't do it. Be exactly who you are and hold on to the vision of who you are and pursue it. And you, everyone around you, including yourself, is going to be better for it. Anyway, that's what I've got for you guys this week. I hope you guys have an amazing eclipse and new moon, and I will catch you guys in the next one. Bye.